This is one of those stories that started off not as a small story, but as a, you know, a local story. And it's just gone national in record time. Basically, this was a, a cross country road trip between two young people, boyfriend, girlfriend, doing a lot of camping and sightseeing. And somewhere along the way, there was some kind of trouble and the boyfriend returned to Florida in the van without Gabby Petito. On a story that's national, there are so many different cogs in the machine. There are so many different people out following up on different leads, chasing down different angles. Initially, we came to Gabby's mother and stepfather's house here on Long Island to speak to her, but one of their family friends, who's an attorney, asked us to not bother them here at home. The challenges in getting a story where some one not involved in the story is trying to protect from basically the downside of dealing with media, I guess. When someone tells them they can't talk about something or they shouldn't talk about something or they're not allowed to talk about something. Most of the questions you're asking, you're hearing an attorney standing in the side of the conference room yelling, we're not gonna answer that. We're, we're not commenting comment on, on that. that. We're not commenting on that. It gets very frustrating and you can see uh, reporters get very frustrated about that. Rather than lash out or express that frustration at the people who are going through this terrible ordeal, what I've found works so much better is to appeal to the people who asked you to attend. I appeal to them with the same question I ask in these types of situations, which is uh, something along the lines of, what, what can we do for you? What do you want from us? What do you want us to do? How can we help? What message do you want us to get out? Like, why are we here? What do you want us to do? That put them at ease immediately. The mother, her tone of voice changed. Basically, her cadence changed. She relaxed immediately. We are not focusing on anything else but finding her. By asking them, what message do you want us to get out? It changes the entire dynamic. Once the people relax and they have got their message out there, you can ask the same questions you asked in the beginning where they said, we can't answer that. We're not talking about that. Oftentimes they do answer several of those questions. And that was the case here in the press conference on Monday when we were doing the interview toward the end. One of the reporters asked the stepfather, do you plan to go out uh, west? And is that why you're raising money on the GoFundMe page? You have to watch. You can't stare at your pad because their body language gives away exactly what they're thinking. A lot of the time, the stepfather was nodding his head. Yes, he mumbled something along the lines of, you know, that's one possibility we're, we're thinking about it. And we reached out to the, the mother, but she confirmed that, yes, he just went out there. That story basically gen was generated from just watching a nod. And I made note to keep searching because I thought that was going to be the beginning of a new chapter. A lot has happened in a few days. Unfortunately, um, yesterday they found Gabby's body out near a campsite where the van had been spotted parked. Also in, in the last couple of days, uh, Brian Laundrie, her boyfriend, disappeared. We've, we've gotten toward the, the top of the arc of this story. There are still more developments that are gonna happen with this story. First of all, finding out what happened to her and then bringing those to justice who took the poor girl's life if that's what happened.